Hey guys, good morning. Um, today I want to do a video today about um, holiness. Um, I don't think this is a very popular topic in today's Christian walk. Uh, today we talk a lot about prosperity. We talk a lot about grace. We talk a lot about God's mercy. We talk a lot about, you know, restoration, miracles, breakthrough. This is the stuff that everyone seems to want to hear about. Um, um, we definitely preach a lot about the importance of tithing and offering and all those other, um, elements that's a part of Christianity, but it's almost as if holiness has taken a back seat. It's not a very popular topic. And there are very few churches that I find that is actually teaching that. So, um, I wanted to use a couple references that I do want to share. If I need to pull on, put on my glasses, I will. I'm trying not to because then there's just this big old glare on my glasses and I don't like it. But, you know, if it just gets too much, guys, then I'll put it on. The first thing that I want to go on here um, to talk about, I'm going to go in the book of Leviticus. Some people may think, well, it's the Old Testament. It has, um, it has no bearing today, but that's not true. Both the Old and the New um, hold significance in our walk. Otherwise, it would not be there. There's not one part that you say, well, this doesn't apply or that does not. Okay. Um, so Leviticus 11 and 45, that particular scripture says, for I am the Lord who brings you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy for I am holy. You shall therefore be holy for I am holy. That's Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45. Now, some people are like, oh, that's old. Again, the Old Testament is not old in the sense of it doesn't apply. It still does. So here we see where God is speaking to the children of um, Israel and he's letting them know, I brought you out of Egypt. Um, you shall therefore be holy for I am holy. And then... I'm going to go to Malachi chapter three, verse six. I'm not doing the all of chapter six, um, all of verse six, but I'm just the very beginning of that. Malachi three, verse six, it says, for I am the Lord. I do not change. Okay. So why am I saying that is some of you may say, well, that was back then, but what I want you to know here, it says, for I am the Lord, Malachi 3 and 6, the very beginning, the first sentence says, for I am the Lord, I do not change. As a matter of fact, this is a scripture that a lot of people read um, before they collect the tithes and the offering, okay? I am the Lord, I do not change. So he's not changing from the God that was saying, be holy for I am holy. Is the same God, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So holiness is still a requirement guys we're not in 2019 and it's a new era of you know get what you you know try to be try to do the best you can because jesus loves you and there's grace and he knows that you are not a perfect person so you'll be able to slide into heaven on a banana peel with good intents and good thoughts and good intentions no if it was that easy <laughs> everybody would be christians okay it is not a simple, it, it, it's not that easy to get in. You've got to, you have to humble yourself and allow God to prepare you. It's not that you're earning your way into heaven because no one is worthy of being there. But what it is, is you put yourself in a place where God is able to change you and condition you and prepare you and change your very nature so that you are able to, to enter into his kingdom, you will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But the only way that can happen, it's not going to be by our might or our power, but by the spirit of God. So getting back onto holiness, let's, let me give you another reference. Hebrews 12 and 14, and it says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no one shall see the Lord. Guys, it's that simple without holiness. No one shall see the Lord. So we get into the famous question that a lot of people say, oh, what's holiness? Uh, what is holiness? You define holiness. Who can be holy? That's not possible. How can you possibly live that way? You can live that way. So what is holiness? I was listening to um, an excerpt by Derek Prince. 
And I'm going to read to you something that he said, because some people want to make it complicated, right? It's, you have to stop doing this and you stop doing that. And how is that possible? That's super difficult to do. Yeah, it is hard to do when you're trying to do it by your own efforts and in the efforts of your flesh. It's impossible. Okay. Um, but let me share with you what Derek Prince says. All right. So what is holiness? Holiness is saying no to what displeases God and saying yes to what pleases God. It's that simple. Holiness is saying no to what displeases God and saying yes to what pleases God. It means you're not being like the world, but you're being like Christ. Simple. He also went on to say, no one is perfectly holy, but no true Christian should be on the same patch of road that they were on last year this time. That means you're doing the same thing over and over again. You, the only the only difference is you got in a different outfit <laughs> or you're doing it with a different person or you're doing it in a different place. I'm here to tell you. Oh, let me go on. Let me finish what uh, past, uh, Derek Prince says. He says, holiness is like a growing plant within you. OK, it's a living thing that is inside of you. And the more you spend time, the more you make yourself available to God, little by little, it will grow, it will grow, it will grow. And your nature and the things that you used to do, you will not do it anymore. You will not have those desires. If there's, I'm telling you right now that you can live a holy life. There's no one perfect, but I'm telling you, God, the word of God says, be holy as I am holy. Be perfect as I am perfect. It's possible. It is very possible, people. And all it takes is getting in the word of God. You see, the thing is, people that say it's hard, I guarantee you that they do not have a regular prayer life. They are probably not spending time in the presence of the Lord. They're not getting up early or whenever the Lord tells them to and worshiping. That means you get in front. You're not just, oh, let me read my scripture real quick. Run out the door. You sleep and you don't want to get up or you, you, you woke up late. So you're rushing out of the house. I'm telling you, when you are meditating in the word of God day and night, This is the Bible. When you are meditating in the word of God, when you are getting in the presence of the Lord, and it's not necessarily a long drawn out prayer, it will, it may be a little, but as you may start off with a short prayer, but I guarantee you after a while, your prayer gets longer. Simply as your relationship with the Lord develops, you will desire it. Your spirit man will desire it. If you're having a hard time living holy, if you're honest with yourself, you know what you're not doing. The Holy Spirit, the presence of the Lord, there is power in the name of Jesus. There, there, there are, there's power in this word. It says, the, uh, can't remember the scripture right off top, but I know it says the word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged swords, breaking, breaking asunder to the dividing of the spirit and is a, and it's a, it's a, hold on. Ugh. The word of God is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword, breaking asunder to the dividing of the spirit. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And I think it's just breaking asunder is the dividing of the joints of the bones of the marrows. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I can't say it. I can't remember. But it's in there. So it that's how... The, pre the, the, the precision of the word of God. It's going to divide you. It is quick and powerful. When you're reading the word, it's not, you're just not reading. I saw something, a quote, it says, when you're, when you're reading your word or when you're reading the Bible or you're reading the word of God, the word of God is reading you. 
So those changes are going to come. It's going to divide you. It's going to divide your spirit. It's going to, it's going to search the, the, the intents of the heart. It's going to divide down, dividing of the sun, dividing asunder of the joints and the marrow. Do you know the bone marrow, the joints, the marrow? It goes deep in there and it's going to show you some things. And it is, it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And those things, that discerning and all those things and the dividing and the changes that will come to the surface and God will show you you. And as you spend time in his word and as you worship him and as you're fasting and as you're doing those things, you will find that your nature is going to change. You're going to find that the desires and the things that you used to have is not going to be there anymore. It's going to be less. And if you if you fall and you mess up, you're going to want to get clean right away. It's going to feel like you got a, a piece of sand in your eye or your eyelash gets in your eye. You know how uncomfortable that is. You want to fix it right away. So it is possible to live a holy life. Holiness is a condition of the heart. It is a condition of the heart. That's why the word says to guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the, the, the issues of life. What you have to do is surrender to God. Okay, first you need to be saved. So if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that he came down in the form of flesh and he died on the cross and he rose the third day, then you shall be saved. Okay, and those of us that are saved already, then you know the deal. You need to confess your sins. You need to uh renounce some things. You need to let go of some things and you need to get in his presence. If you want certain habits and things to stop, then you have got to get in the presence of the Lord. You have to pray. You have to seek him. And when you seek him, he will start to change your nature and you will find that you will be able to live a holy life. You will be able to walk the straight and narrow path that is set for us. The, you know, the word talks about how broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow and difficult is the way that leads to everlasting life. And there are going to be very few that's going to find it. And I'm telling you that if you are not living a holy life, if you are not living a righteous life, if you are not living and walking uprightly, you're not going to see God. Don't let the devil fool you. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that shall you reap. And you have to realize, yes, Jesus loves us. God loves us. And that's why every single day that you wake up, every single day that I wake up and you wake up, it is always an opportunity. It's an opportunity to continue to tell people about the Lord. If you are saved and you are living for Christ, then when you wake up, it's not an opportunity just for you to get up, make more money, do whatever, be the best wife, be the best husband, be the best uh, executive at work, mom, dad, whatever it is. It is an opportunity for you to utilize what God has given you to be a blessing and to serve him in spirit and in truth and to te tell people about tell people about God and tell people about the Lord and his goodness by the word of your testimony for those of you that n are not saved and not living right every day you wake up it's a chance it's an opportunity for you to know God to be to get right with him the word says again without holiness no one shall see the Lord don't get it twisted. Don't let the enemy and let people fool you because God is not going to be calling your church leaders and blaming them for what will maybe in their own. Let's put it like this. In that day, you're not going to be able to say, well, I didn't know. And my pastor told me this and my first lady told me this and this is what I believed. Everyone gets an opportunity, even with videos like this, it's an opportunity. And I'm not the only person you probably heard things like this. You've seen it. You've heard it. Everyone has an opportunity. So just know that each day that you wake up, it is an opportunity to start fresh, to get right with the Lord. It is not just waking up and doing what you want to do. Every day you wake up, every time you open your eyes, it is an opportunity from the Father for you to get yourself together. But saints, Christians, holiness is a part of it. We're in an age and in an era where everybody is trying to be and look like the world. You really cannot tell the difference anymore in the churches. 
And one of the biggest things, you know, even in some of the things that we are wearing, you know, and I don't really want to touch on that too much. That's another video. Um, because even some of the things that people are coming into church with, um, you want to use discretion, you know, granted you can wear pants, you can wear jeans, you can wear different things. And sometimes I, you know, I, I have some pants that have certain things that I will wear, but what I'm saying is it's getting to the point where sometimes it's just borderline scandalous. There's no holiness there. You can't tell the difference. You know, you're up there and, and you're walking around and you're jiggling and you're shaking and, and, and you're, you're oiled up and you're a distraction. Now, some people may say, well, these, these men or women or whoever it is, they, they in their flesh, if they looking at me, no, you're in your flesh and, and you're charging up their flesh. That's what it is. Flesh, flesh equals flesh. Everybody get all fleshed out. There's certain things, and again, I said this is another video. When you get up, and I can only speak from a female perspective, okay? You are getting dressed for church. You do a once-over in that mirror. And before you get out of that door, you know how you look. You know. When you turn around and you look in, and I can see the split in your butt through your dress, and you see it. Before I see it, before somebody else see it, you see it. But you choose to come out that way. And I don't care what you say. Something in here. You're trying. You're trying. You're sending a message. You should hunger and thirst after righteousness. Not for attention. Not to, you know, be whatever, uh, you know, covert. Getting attention and then condemning somebody because they say something to you. I don't know what to say too much with a man. I mean, I guess they wear some tight shirts or whatever and, and, and that's stuff that they need to kind of deal with. But I, I see the biggest thing are the women because we look good. And when we put ourselves together, we can enhance, but we can also be a distraction, right? Because we're different. We're curvy. We're smooth, cute. Okay. So our, the effect of a woman is different. Okay. But nonetheless, both, uh, genders, are very much responsible for how they put themselves together. But however, because I'm not a man, I cannot speak too much on that. And I don't see that very much in the church with the men as I do with the women. But again, this has gone on long enough. And that is a topic for another day that I will speak about as the Lord leads me. But the biggest thing for today, what I want to close out with is holiness. Without holiness, no one shall see God. So it is about getting in front of him, meditating in his word. Take a look at Psalms 1. It says, Bless is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That means you're not walking in advice, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his laws does he meditate day and night. And when you're doing that, that means you're in his word and not literally day and night because you got to go to work and do things like that. OK, but it means you're spending a lot of time meditating in his word. You know, that you're not just reading real quick and running out the door. You're meditating because when you're meditating and you're studying the word of God and you're getting in his presence, you're going to change and you're going to find that you are going to be able to walk that path of holiness that God has ordained for all his children. All right. So have a good day and uh, be blessed.